Hey everyone, Aaron from The Impatient Gardener. It has been three years since I started this Belgian espalier fence made out of royal raindrops, crab apples in my garden. And I am astounded at how well it's doing. Now we do need to do a little bit of maintenance today. So I thought it would be a good time to just bring you along for the few little things that I'm doing to this. Talk to you a little bit about how it's been going and where we go from here. But since we're in the vegetable garden, I thought before we do that, I would just give you a brief update on the stock tank pond. So this is the um, 150 gallon stock tank pond. It's four feet in diameter that I've had in this vegetable garden now for I think three, maybe four years. Uh, this is always an adventure for me because I don't really know a lot about water gardening. I'm learning a little bit more every year and uh, it's super fun. I enjoy it so much. So. We're at the stage here where I'm going to add the black pond dye, but I wanted to show you before I add the dye what is going on in this because it's much easier to see what's happening before um, before I add the dye because you obviously can't see it then. So this year I'm actually growing two lotuses. Now, honestly, these lotuses like this one right here should probably not be in the tank yet. If you can see, see if I can get you an angle at which you can see this. There is some growth right here. And really that should, I should have waited until that was up out of the water before I put it in there. But honestly, I had these sitting around and all they were doing was creating a place for mosquitoes to have babies when they were just sitting out. So I put them in here, I think it'll be fine. The big one already has a floating leaf or about to have a floating leaf because I just topped up the tank last night. So this one is fine. You can see it's got lots of growth points on it. And then this year I've also added a queen tut papyrus grass. Um, I probably have to bring that pot up just a touch. The level for that one should be the whole plant can be submerged, but not the crown. And right now the crown is just barely underwater. So I'll stick like one more stone underneath that probably. So the way I do this is I just use nursery cans, uh, turned upside down ones with holes in them. And then I either like this, this lotus pot, which has no holes in it, is plenty big to weigh that down. Um, with this one, I had to raise it up a little bit. So I just have some, I don't know how much you can see here. I just have some big, um, big like brick type things underneath there. And then I have added some fish to the pond. I'll add more. Now, if you can see them floating around in here, there's these little orange guys. These are just feeder fish. I don't even know what kind they are really. I just go to the pet store and buy feeder fish. Um, and their job is to take care of the mosquito larvae in here, eat any other bugs that come along and eat LJ. And uh, they do a really good job of that. Now the black pond dye does help keep the LJ situation down here a little bit because um, here we've got several of them are currently in the lotus pot. Um, they'll get themselves out of there. Actually, there were a lot more when I came back for, so they'll swim out of there, but they're in there right now. Um, the black pond day does help keep the LJ at a minimum because the sun just can't get through. I also happen to really like the look and I don't want to see all the pots and stuff that's in here. Now that means I can't really see the fish for the most part, but that's okay. The fish are here to do a job. So qu just a quick note about the fish situation. Although I try not to like look at these things, I did see on a Facebook group somebody mentioning how I was a terrible person and they stopped following me because I killed my fish. You guys, I don't kill the fish at the end of the season. I rehome them. I put them up on Facebook Marketplace and someone comes and gets them. Now the past two years since I've only, this is my third year with fish, so I've only had them for two years. Um, the first year I put them on Facebook Marketplace, last year I just called that same person again and said, do you want them? She said yes, because she comes and gets them right away and that's all. So I empty this pond every year. I have a whole video, by the way, about the stock tank pond. So I'll link that here so you can see it. But I empty the pond every year. And I, the reason I don't get fish that are more interesting than feeder fish is that I don't want fish to babysit over winter. I don't need any more pets. I do not want to take that on. And I also know that fish can kind of become a hobby and I don't need any more hobbies. I have too many hobbies already, so I don't need to get fully involved in something else. So the fish do a job. When they're done with their job, I rehome them. End of story. One thing I've learned about the pond dye is that you use gloves when handling it. So this is what I use. I use the same bottle every year. I might have to get a new bottle fairly soon because a friend of mine 
used pond dye that was like three years old and it turned her water like, I don't know, bright blue. It was terrible. So, so um, I'm gonna give this a good shake. Now this lasts forever because this bottle treats a one acre pond four to six feet deep. So I literally need, I don't know, a few drops. So I thought I just, but I'm gonna give it a good shake. But anyway, the stuff leaks everywhere. It's already leaking all over my stones. So yeah, you just have to, and it stains your hands really bad. So I'm just gonna put a few drops in here. By the way, this is completely non-toxic, fine for the fish, fine for bugs, fine for, oh, that's gonna be way too much. Fine for anything that goes in there, birds, you name it, it's fine. Okay, I'm just gonna use my net to sort of stir the water up a little bit here so we can get it moving around. I don't have anything else to stir the water here. I have this stupid little aquarium tank net. I should get a longer one so I can reach the bottom. But um, it does, I do a pretty much a daily skim on it. Right now, all the flowers are falling off the trees, so it's really quite messy here. So normally I might stick the hose in here and that'll help circulate the water really well, but I don't wanna add any more cold water to this for both the lilies and the fish. I mean, the lotuses and the fish. There we go. So I think that looks like, especially once I get like the pollen and stuff off the surface, I think that looks so much nicer. I like the look of that much better. And like I said, it'll help it go, it won't grow as much algae. Now I can still actually see the pots through there. I think I could always add a little bit more if I want it darker. I do like to not be able to see the pots, but once these are flowering or have their leaves up, you won't see it anyway. So. I will link the other videos I've done on this before so I don't have to go over the whole process with you again. But I think you can see basically each side had five crabapple whips planted in it. Um, I cut them all off at about 16 inches and uh, created, uh, trained up two branches, including on the ends, by the way, even where we wanted a straight one, which was one of the biggest questions that came out of that. And that's important to do because of apical dominance, meaning that the, the trees have a natural, um, plants have a natural tendency to grow to the highest point. So that's how you get leaders in trees. And so if I hadn't cut it off and trained, you know, one to the side and one up, uh, we would have ended up with a situation where it wouldn't have popped those side branches and we would have had one branch, you know, one leader going straight up in the air much stronger than the others. So these are all trained on bamboo stakes, which eventually we won't need there anymore, but at this point I do need to reinforce them and add a bit more. Now you can see we're coming up over the top of the fence and I am gonna actually clip these. It's so beautiful right now coming out of its flower. Um, at some point this summer though, I will go through and I'll, I'll get those all maybe three inches above the line of the fence because we don't want this to keep growing up with spindly growth. So the whole goal is just basically a little bit above fence height. Now this side, which is the east side, is doing better than the west side. I don't know that there's any particular reason for that. Um, a couple of these have not, um, just have not been as strong growing. In particular, this middle one right here. Now I do, I do have a shoot we're gonna cut out of there, but this guy right here, it was, not great from the beginning and i really think it's because the concrete for this fence post is bigger i think it's planted right up against that concrete and so i think it's really struggling for room in there now i do have a drip line set up here it's a little weedy here we're just going to look past that because um, we haven't gotten to that stage yet but the the goal here is that every here let me get to somewhere where branches are crossing so here you can see that we've got two diagonals and they're crossing. Now they may, they may actually grow together in time. That'd be great if they did that, but I'm not gonna do, sometimes you can take a little cut out of each branch and then sort of meld them together. I'm not gonna do that. That seems risky to me. I don't wanna risk um, anything going in there. So if they meld together and you know, the two crossing branches sort of grow together eventually, that's great. And if they don't, it's okay too, it doesn't matter. So, I mean, when you look down this way, they're so pretty. 
just really um, the flowers are fading now we had the bright you know they come out bright bright pink with dark purple flowers and I am going to rinse this off when we're done so you can see this because it's quite covered in dust and pollen right now it has been so dry here we haven't had rain for I think a month so everything is just dry and right now I've got the um, we have two sprinklers running at a time right now basically as long as we're here to move them around we have two running at any given time so um, that's why you see hoses laying around everywhere and if I look like a drowned rat it's because I've been moving sprinklers around all morning and of course that means you get sprayed in the face at least every time you move a sprinkler so the first thing I want to do today is um, I need to extend some of the bamboo canes that were here because I only put them up high enough for them to grow those first couple of years and now they've grown past that so they need further support so we're going to extend those bamboo canes so on this side of the fence you can see that right here I need to um, create another one and right here and I think oh and that one too all three of these need to get an extension put on them now I had really like really measured out these diamonds really carefully and things have shifted a little bit as it's grown I guess I'm not overly concerned about that to be honest so cable ties are the easiest way to do this and I did get some dye on my hands anyways I see another one just to keep them together now sometimes I have to also sort of um, connect these to the fence as well just to keep them so they're not coming out but I think we're okay on this one you can see how this branch because it wasn't supported it started growing this way so we're gonna have to very gently ease it back down this way and to clip these in I've been using these clips now I've been told I get mine on Amazon I've been told you can get them at the dollar store so check the dollar store if you have one near you um, but these are so much nicer than the ties and I'm going to show you why because we're going to remove some ties here in a little bit too So you see how we've got this branch straightened out a little bit better now so um, that will be good and now we're going to put another probably before I did that I should have put the brace in going this way too I will just take a small little clip just to get that one sort of going in the right direction but it's not even really being held in there so eventually when those two cross they will I'll just keep trimming it this way all right I think I, I think you get the gist of the training in portion so let me finish that up and then we'll move on to just a couple other things okay everything is now tied up and it looks so much better now we do have some a big gap right here in this one so again part of that is caused by this guy that's just always struggled down here in fact you can even see his leaf color is a little off um, but this one is coming up this one's growing up so we should get something crossing this way and these guys are going so I think we'll get that filled in sooner rather than later as I was putting those bamboo stakes in I thought to myself why didn't I finish this bamboo trellis when we originally did it and I remembered why because I wasn't sure this was going to work and I didn't want to waste all that bam those bamboo stakes which at the time were really hard to find uh, installing a trellis that was not going to get used so I guess I didn't have a lot of confidence going into this okay now the next thing we're going to do is some low work so in a couple of places we have some shoots coming up from below the graft which is what these really green guys are so we need to go down here and what you want to do is just you want to cut those as low as you can like below the soil level and I'll take that little guy out now this is the original tie that I put on three years ago when we did this so we need to get that off and I think you're gonna see why these are bad because I'll bet you any money this has already affected this trunk which is why I don't you yeah see look I've already got some issues developing there I think not too bad I don't think it's anything that's gonna harm the tree super long term but you can tell it would have been better if that wasn't there so and then I'm gonna this is the original bamboo stake 
that I put in there. And I'm going to cut that off too. Just to, it's in the ground still, but just to get that out of the way. In terms of routine maintenance here, obviously they get water regularly, which I think is really important. Um, I do fertilize these. I don't fertilize a lot of trees. I do fertilize these in spring. I think this year I use tree tone. I usually use, well, that's probably the one I use the most, plant tone sometimes. Something organic can sit there and do its thing. Um, and then I do prune on these quite a bit because I don't want to lose the shape that we've worked so hard to get. Now I'm going to wait a little bit. They're going to get a little shaggy here because I'm going to fully enjoy these beautiful blooms. And I also don't want to cut off, um, I don't want to cut off any of the potential crab apples because that's part of the appeal here for me too. Um, but I will show you one area that has nothing growing on it that we can prune on to give you an example of what I do. So if you look right here, you can see there's some pretty long spindly growth here. And basically what I'm going to do is take that back to there. So there's solid growth coming off that's about that long. And same thing here. You can tell I've pruned that before. And we'll just neaten that up. Same thing down here. Um, I am relatively indiscriminate as to when I do this, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's I just kind of do it when it gets too shaky for me to be able to stand it. So there's some other ones here. And then I think maybe you can see on this one, we've got quite a lot of growth in the bottom here. So I'm just gonna prune some of that off because we do want a little bit of a stem. Oh, look, good thing I did that too because I just found more tape. Yeah, I, I have to tell you, um, I do not recommend using that stuff because this is what happens. You forget about it. It's all fine. It works great for six months to a year, but then you forget about it. There. Oh, can't you just feel that breathe a sigh of relief? And then see if I can get that out of there. There. Those rest of those things I can just pick off by hand. Even this little guy I'm gonna take off down there. So we get a little bit of we get a little bit of leg showing. And then here's a clip I put on there a long time ago. I'll just take that off. Those clips are pretty gentle on there. I don't worry about that too much. But once they're growing in the right direction and you don't need them, you just take them off. And reuse them. So for the most part this Belgian fence and by the way I have no idea why it's called a Belgian fence. Um, I've even had people from the country of Belgium say I've never heard of that. I just know that that is when you study espalier that is what this form of espalier is called and that's all I can tell you. I even looked for sort of the derivation of this. I can't find any information so anyway I can't answer that question for you but I can tell you that this has been relatively carefree. Now, last year we did run into cedar apple rust with these. It's almost a foregone conclusion. Now, Royal Raindrops is quite resistant to a lot of issues, including rust. There's so much cedar apple rust around here that all my service berries have it. It's why I did not plant more service berries uh, in the new uh, screening that we did with the neighbors. Um, it's just a thing that we deal with. Now, it doesn't kill your plants. It looks disgusting. I did treat these uh, this spring with a fungicide, a copper fungicide, um, which you cannot use on edible plants, by the way, but you obviously this is not, I'm not eating this. So um, the time to do it is just when buds are forming. So that's the right time to do it. So I did spray this whole thing with copper fungicide. I don't know if that'll actually work. We'll see if it makes any difference or not. Um, it doesn't kill the plant, it just makes it look really disgusting actually so and I think over time it would weaken the plant because most diseases do so that's the one issue I've run into with into with this and as far as this project goes the most difficult part of this whole project was finding the trees so I was able to and you can go back and watch the original video I was able to get these through a local nursery that grows out trees so I had established a little bit of a relationship with them being a frequent buyer and I said, hey, could I buy some whips for you? Now, now, whips are grafted trees, at least in this case, that haven't branched yet. So they're just one tall stick. I think maybe those sticks were maybe four feet tall, three and a half feet tall, something like that when we planted them. And then you plant those and then you cut them hard. 
people have asked me, where do you get these? I don't know. There must be a fruit tree, because you could do this with an apple or a pear. That's usually what people do it with, or something else. There must be a purveyor out there that sells whips for this purpose. You just have to find them. That's the hardest part. Everything else about this, honestly, has been pretty darn easy. I mean, I don't mean to jinx myself here. I'm going to do a little knocking on wood here. But this has not been a difficult project. And the fact is, is that three years into this, it looks, I did not think three years into this, it was going to look this good. Five years, yes. Three years, I didn't think so. I actually think at the rate this is going in another two years, we might be able to remove all the bamboo framing caning on this. Um, I just hope it keeps going because... I'm super proud of it. It's one of my favorite features in the garden and you have to kind of go looking for it. Like not everyone who comes to this garden will see this because a lot of people are like, oh, vegetable garden, I don't want to see that. This is so cool. I love having it. And the best thing is, is that it was a great experiment and it worked. So anyway, give it a try in your garden. If you can find the trees, it's not hard. Okay, so that is the update on the Belgian fence. Thanks for following me along on this journey. Many of you were there when we first planted this. And uh, if you're new since then, you know, welcome, welcome to the Belgian fence party. All right, have a great day in your garden. We'll see you soon.